The next topic is about alarms and events. So when we talk about CloudWatch, we can also create specific alarms in CloudWatch. So what are CloudWatch alarms used for? If something is being, um, you know, breaching my threshold, then at that time, I would want to create one alarm. For example, if my EC2 is having the CPU utilization greater than 90%, then I want to get notified for the same. So if you want such notifications, then you have to create the CloudWatch alarms. You have different alarm state. There are three alarm state. Okay, in alarm and sub insufficient data. And lastly, we would be discussing about different alarm components and how the alarm get triggered. So CloudWatch alarm is a mechanism that will enable you to monitor metrics for AWS resources. You can receive the notification for specific metrics that you would have defined. You can set the threshold for the metrics such as uh, CPU usage, memory usage, network traffic, storage space, etc. When the metrics are being breached, you can automatically perform one or more actions. Those actions depends up to you that what you want to do. Do you want to send the notification as email? Do you want to execute some Lambda function? Or do you want to stop EC2 instance? You can set the alarms using management console with the help of programming as well with the help of command line interfaces. So CloudWatch alarms can be based on simple threshold rules such as when a metric crosses a certain threshold value for a certain period of time. Or more complex expressions can also be given that combine multiple metrics and conditions. So basically, see, what happens over here is, for let's say 5 minutes of time, if my CPU utilization is greater than 90%, then I can accept it. But for consequent 10 minutes of time, if it is greater than 90%, then that would be the, you know, alarming state for me. So you can decide that for how many period some threshold should be breached so to notify. We do not want any false alarm because sometimes because of some spiky traffic or some, uh, you know, reduced performance, the CPU utilization might go up. But we don't want any false alarms. We want to get the alarms when a metric is being breached okay and it is breaching the threshold for a specific period of time or for few intervals of that period then only i want to get notified so you can decide that okay you have to configure that on the portal so there are three different alarm states okay alarm and insufficient data Okay means everything is fine. Your threshold is not being exceeded yet. So let's suppose that I have created one matrix for CPU utilization. Okay. And I have kept the threshold as 50%. So if the CPU utilization is going beyond 50%, then I want to get notified. So till the time my CPU utilization would be 48, 49, 40, 38, I will not get notified. My alarm state would be okay. But as soon as my CPU utilization is going beyond 50 for specific period of time or specified period of time, then in that case, my alarm will go 
in alarm state. It means that the threshold that we have defined is getting exceeded. And lastly, we have insufficient data. It means that not enough data is available or not enough information is available for me to understand that what is happening. It indicates that we do not have enough data to determine whether alarm, whether metric is in, in alarm state or not. So this can be, you know, state when alarm is not currently evaluating the metrics for specified condition. Or it can be also useful because we can verify, okay, whether everything is working fine or not. When, when it is, when the metrics or when the alarm is an insufficient data state, okay. So initially it is fine. But after so long, if it is still staying in insufficient alarm, insufficient data state, then it means that we have done something wrong in configuring that alarm because it is not able to fetch the data from that particular AWS resource. So these were the three different states that one alarm can have. The next topic that we are going to discuss is about different alarm components. So different alarm components, the first alarm component is metric. So metric is a numeric or a quantitative measurement of a resource or a service that AWS provides. It is used to understand the health or the performance of our AWS resource. And it is also used to trigger the alarms and the notifications when certain conditions are being met. So you can have different metrics according to the different services like CPU utilization, network traffic, disk usage. These are all related basically to EC2, right? We do also have the metrics for RDS such as how many read requests are being made, how many write requests are being made. Metrics is represented by a name and a dimension. So dimension is nothing but the additional attributes that can be provided with the metrics. Suppose I am monitoring the CPU utilization metrics and I have multiple EC2s in my account. So dimension will add the attribute that provide the context for that particular metric, such as I can say that I want to have the CPU utilization for this particular instance ID. So instance ID is a dimension. I want CPU utilization for the EC2 in this particular region. So region is a dimension. I want CPU utilization for this particular instance type. So instance type is one dimension. The next component is threshold. So it is the value that we have set for our metrics that triggers an alarm. So when the metric value breaches the threshold, the CloudWatch can take an action that you specify and it would be sending a notification or it can be also executing the Lambda function. This will work according to the configurations that you would have done. Then we have a period. So as I said that we do not want any false alarms. So it is the length of time over which CloudWatch will aggregate the data for the metrics. It can be in second minutes or hours. It depends up to the granularity that you want your data to be monitored with. Then we have statistic. It is a summary of the data point because obviously we won't be, you know, monitoring each and every data point. Instead, we would be having one summary according to different stats. It can be minimum, maximum, average or sum. For example, I can say that I want to create one alarm when the CPU utilization, the average CPU utilization is exceeding 
seventy percent for consecutive ten minutes of time. So this is a stat. I said average CPU utilization. I did not say CPU utilization. So for ten minutes of time, if the average CPU utilization is exceeding seventy percent, then notify me. Evaluation period is the fifth component of the alarm that we have. So it is the time period over which CloudWatch will check the metrics against the threshold. You can specify the evaluation period in terms of number of periods that a metrics must exceed the threshold before the alarm is being triggered. So period means one interval. It can be of let's say five minutes. I want to say that if two periods are being breached, then notify me. So for consecutive, for consequently ten minutes of time, if the threshold is being breached, then I want it to be notified. And the last component of alarm that we have is action. So actions are the steps that CloudWatch will take once the alarm is being triggered. So you can specify one or more action to be taken, like sending email notification, adding up the EC2 instances for auto scaling, executing some Lambda function, stopping the EC2 instance, stopping the RDS, etc. So these are the different kind of actions that we can have against the alarm trigger. So this is very important example over here. This is the CPU utilization, right? Uh, the dotted line is representing the threshold, and the green line is representing the actual CPU utilization. So I have said that if the threshold is being breached for two consecutive periods, then notify me. And the period over here is of five minutes, as you can see it from the graph. So, what would be the alarm states in all of these different uh, periods? So, here it would be okay because it is at the low. On the next five minutes, also it would be okay, though it is breaching the threshold, but it is not breaching it for two consecutive periods. Here also it will check two consecutive here and here. Is it both out of threshold? No, that's why it would be okay. At this point, is it out of two consecutive periods are out of uh, threshold? No, that's why here also it would be okay. At this point as well, it will check is it out for two consecutive periods? So yes, you can see that this one and this one both are out. So at this point of time, our alarm would be triggered. Then at this point again, it will check whether it is, you know, breaching the threshold. So no, for two consecutive, it is not breaching. So that's why it will be again going to OK state. So it will come into the alarm state when two consecutive periods are breaching the threshold. Rest, it would be staying into the OK state. So this is how our cloud watch metrics or say the cloud watch alarms would be working. So now that we have seen the theory portion of this, let us go to the portal and understand the demonstration as well for logs and also for the alarms. Okay, so I am on to my AWS management console. Over here, we will be trying to send the RDS logs to our cloud. Okay, so I'll be going to my uh, relational database service that is RDS. We have already created one RDS over here, right? So I will just go to the database. I'll be selecting this uh, database instance that we have. And then after, I'll be just clicking on the modify button over here. 
So once I click on modify over here, I have an option if I scroll a little bit down. I have enabled enhanced monitoring. Okay, the granulity is of 60 seconds. Right, apart from that, if you want the audit logs, error logs, or general logs, slow query logs to be added over here, you can also add it. Okay, so once it is done, we will be exporting our logs to the cloud. Okay. The role is also being assigned over here. You can see that uh, a new role is being created. RDS monitoring role and uh, here also RDS service link role, which will allow RDS to publish the log to cloud because security again is important on AWS, right? So we would then uh, save this. We will continue. And we will say modify the database. So it is successfully modified. Now the next thing that we have to do is we have to go to CloudWatch. So I will just simply search for CloudWatch. So we are into our uh, CloudWatch dashboard as you can see it over here, right? I had some of the alarms that were being created. This is the dashboard that you are, this is the overview basically that you are using or seeing. Under the logs, we will be going into log groups. So when we go to the log groups, over here, we should be seeing one RDS OS metrics, right? It is the log that are, these are the basically logs coming from the RDS. So I can just go there inside. You can see this particular log stream. I can go inside of this log stream and the events would be generated over here. So you can see the instance ID is database2 and uh, engine is MySQL, right? Uh, there are other events as well. So you can see the events by expanding it. So what happened into this, the engine is uh, MySQL instance ID is database 2. So this was the timestamp, right? Uptime was this number of CPUs, CPU utilization. This was the memory task swap. Everything regarding to that RDS would be visible over here to you. <clears throat> right. So we have the enhanced monitoring on. So you can see that uh, we are having the log for every minute over here. So every minute the log would be sent to our AWS CloudWatch. Okay, so this is how the logging can work. Uh, like you can also have your application which are there running on EC2 or which are there on your on-prem server. You can also uh, install the CloudWatch uh, agent on that and you can send the logs over here. If you want to view the insights, basically if you know what to query your logs, then also you can query your logs using this particular service that is called as log insights. So you can see over here we are just having the log stream this and we can try running this query. So it will fetch the data from here. You can see it over here, right? <laughs> if you want to have some example queries, then these example queries are already given over here, right? You can have the discovered field. For example, what is the timestamp? What is the message? Okay. 
what is the log stream what was the ingestion time if all of this you want to have then also you can have it from here so this is the example of particular log that is cloud watch log and which on which group this log insight is working it is working on rds we have the logs for test function we have the log for s3 uh, function we have the log for my recipe my ami recipe demo test one lambda right cloud trail logs for the control tab so all these different log groups are there and uh, onto those groups we can run our insights okay so that's it if you want to save the results of this you can save it from here right and you can run the queries in sql like language this basically is not a sql language but it is very similar to that of sql okay so this was about the cloud watch logs and log insights <clears throat> now the other thing that i want to show you is alarms so i'll go to all alarms over here okay the target tracking of sample table that we have created is in alarm okay uh, sample table is basically our dynamo db that we have created so the cloud watch logs is also enabled on that okay now i'll go with the ec2 instance i am going to create a new alarm <clears throat> i have to select a metric over here I want to select the metric for EC2. Now we can see that we have different metrics for DynamoDB, for EFS, for logs, for RDS, EBS, right? So I'll go with EC2 over here. I want per instance metric. I think there are two instances which are on as of now. And I want to work on CPU utilization. This is the CPU utilization metric that I have, right? So I will select this particular metric from here. And this is the instance ID which we are using. The instance name is app server. I'll just try to duplicate this tab and uh, I'll go to EC2. Just to check whether that instance is, you know, on or not. That's for A10 at the end of the instance ID. Do we have any running instances over here? Yes, we do have one instance running. <clears throat> that is with the different ID. Right, so I'll go back. And I'll try to find this particular instance ID over. Okay, this is our application server. It is being stopped right now. I'll change the instance state and I will start this particular instance. So we will just wait for the instance state to come in running. And once it is coming in running, we will be connecting back to the CloudWatch alarm. Basically, this is a private instance, I believe. I want one public instance so that, you know, I can run the stress command on it. It is running. What I'll do is, I will once try to connect to this particular instance. Okay, this is obviously a private instance. So that's why I do not want to use this instance for my uh, alarm okay i will be using another instance we will go back to creating the alarm we will be selecting the metrics over here for ec2 
we have per instance right we can put here the resource id uh, i don't want app server instead i want uh, okay web server is there web server can use cpu utilization okay web server cpu utilization i'll go to the ec2 console and i will try to find it web server <coughs> we have this web server over here with us which is again in the stop state i will make it into the start state why i did not use private instances because i wanted to connect to that particular instance okay and i did not want to change the security groups and all those configurations so that's why instead i went and search for a public instance so that i can easily connect with it <clears throat> so till the time this is coming in the running state i will select this metric for web server i want the statistic this was the component of alarm if you remember so i want average cpu utilization for 5 minute period okay i want to use a static threshold value you can also use anomaly detection here if you want so i'll say that if the cpu utilization is going beyond 50% then uh <clears throat> utilize then notify me okay so greater than or equal to I go to next i want the alarm state to be triggered in alarm uh i want to send this to existing sns topic i will just uh, select the existing sns topic for the same so i have selected the existing topic i have auto scaling action if you want to trigger the auto scaling with this what is auto scaling you will be understanding it in the later course if you want to add an ec2 instance as in to stop the ec2 instance then you can also add it if you want to have any system manager uh, action like to run the ops item or you want to create the incident for that so you can also do that but i do not want any of this so i will just click on next i'll give the alarm name as uh, demo alarm once it is done i can just click on next again <clears throat> so we have to review this over here this is our 50% utilization thresh threshold if this is reached i will be you know sending some um, notification to my topic alarm that is sns topic which is being created what is sns that is simple notification service also we are going to understand later in this course what is that and uh, this is the demo alarm so once everything is done you can create your alarm from here so right now this alarm status is in active state but we are having insufficient data i'll go back to my ec2 instance it is into the running state but now what i'll do is to stress this ec2 i'll try to generate the dummy traffic on it so for that i have connect to that particular ec2 instance so i have connected to this instance and i am going to install the apple over here okay uh, sudo s would be small that's why it is giving me error so apple repository will help us to install other commonly used software packages easy okay so we would be after installing this i would be going and install stress package which will you know allow me to stress on my ec2 it will generate the dummy traffic on my ec2 so this is the command that i'm going to use sudo yum install stress and uh, it is installed it is already installed and the latest version is there now the next thing that i'll do is i'll stress my cp so i'll run the stress command over here with four cpus and with the timeout of um uh, 180 second okay so i will just re iterate this command i guess s would be capital over here okay so i had some extra spaces over here that's why it was not working but now you can see i have stress Four CPUs and the timeout is of three hundred seconds. 
So four CPUs are being dispatching over here. Basically, the stress command is the Linux utility which is used to generate a workload on a system to test its stability, performance, reliability under heavy loads. Okay. So I am loading my CPU over here. If we go back to the instances, right? And if I select this web server and uh, if I go to monitoring, then the CPU utilization would be changing here, okay? And as it changes, we will be also able to see the effect of that in this demo alarm. <clears throat> so right now it is in OK state. It will take some time for uh, generating or you know making it come into the in alarm state. So we have to wait for that. So you can see over here the utilization is going up, right? So it does take a little bit of time for it to get into the effect. Now here as well, the utilization is going up. It is getting raised. Okay, so we will just wait again for some time and check whether it is going into an alarm state or not. Right now the state is okay. Okay, but it will breach for consecutive two periods of time, then it will be going to the in alarm state. For that, we have to wait for some time. So I have just updated my alarm and made my threshold value to 10%, okay? And you can see that it is being up over here, right? But if it if for five minutes average would be above 10% of CPU utilization, then the Alarm would, would come in in alarm state. Okay. So for 5 minutes it should be. Okay, yeah. So you can see it is in alarm state as it breached the utilization. Right. It breached one data point within 5 minutes. So that's why it is in alarm state. Still now it was in OK. After editing it went to alarm state. So that's it uh, for the alarms as well. Okay. So this was about. CloudWatch alarm. Now the next thing that we are going to explore over here is about CloudTrail. So if I just try to go to CloudTrail, it allows us to track the and the API usage, right? Now what I'll do is I'll just go to the instances over here, to the EC2 instances. And the very I'll be stopping all my running instances because I do not want to pay extra for anything. That's the one thing you have to remember on cloud that do not keep your resources idle. If you do so, you are going to face, you know, adverse consequences for that. So I will stop it. Stop it. Okay. So we have this uh, CloudWatch trail over here. Now I want to create one trail, right? So how to do that? Let us understand this over here. So we have to navigate to trails over here. You can see we have trails, right? We would be creating a trail. And uh, let's say that I'm going to name this as a sample trail. And into that, you have to enable it for all accounts into your organization. So if you are using AWS organization, you can enable it for all the accounts. I do not want to do it as of now, so I'll keep it as it is. I'll create a new S3 bucket for it. I do not want to use the existing S3 bucket. So that would be the storage location for CloudTrail logs. So this bucket will be created over here. Encryption is being enabled, right? And uh, if you want, you can also disable this. 
so existing key you can use it but i do not have any keys over here so you can just put key alias but let's just not encrypt this okay right now i'm just uh doing it disabled log file validation is there so it is used to determine if any changes or any modifications are being done to the aws cloud trail logs which are being stored in s3 so if you enable this uh, then we can use the digest files to verify that your log files did not change after CloudTrail delivered them. So we'll be just keeping this enabled for the safety purpose. SNS notification delivery after the CloudWatch trails are being you know, sent to S3. Do you want to have the notification for that enabled or not? Do you want to send this to the CloudWatch for monitoring purpose or for you know analysis purpose? So no, I do not want to send it once it is done i'll just click on next then we have three different types of events management event data event and the insight event so management events are uh, something which uh, allows you to capture who signed in at what time api usage that are performed on your resources so by default it is logged by aws cloud Tree. If you want to have the data events, it means events done on the resources, when the user uploaded file on S3 bucket, when deleted, all of such details would be received by data events. And then you have insight events. So it is on the pattern based behavioral changes on APIs like unusual API calls. It takes 36 hours for first logging your event. Okay, first logging event would take 36 hours. So one trial with management event is free. More than one trial if you create, it is being charged. By default, multi-region trial is being enabled. Data and insight event. Data trails and the insight trails or the data events or the insight events are always charged. So you want to have the read-write activities uh, that all the API activities for read and write both would be logged. Right? I'll just go to next. We will be reviewing and creating this particular log now so let's create this so our sample trial is being you know sample trail is being enabled now okay it is into the active state so whatever data events will happen would be going to our s3 bucket now right so let's just try to go to S3 and see if we are getting anything over there or not. And what I'll do is, I will also try one more with that. I'll try to on this demo one instance. Okay, it is not having the EBS volume. Maybe I would have deleted that. So I'll just open this web server and start the instance. It is pending. Let's go to S3. Now here a new bucket is being created. AWS CloudWatch Trail. You can see it over here. We will select that particular bucket. We have AWS log prefix. We have this prefix. If I get inside of this, I have cloud trail. Cloud trail digest is for understanding if any changes have been made to your cloud trail logs or not. So we do not have any objects as of now over here because you know no such activities uh, have been captured. So that's why we do not have any kind of logs over here so what i can do is i can sign out and sign in and we can check whether that is being you know logged over here or not let's try to refresh this once we do not have any objects so let me just sign out and sign in once and then we can check it here so i have done some uh, actions over here right into us east one and uh, east two west two so if you see under US East 1 into the 2022 folder, right, we have today's uh, month, so we have year, 
and we have this cloud trail log. So if we just try to open this, we will see that something is being done over here, right? So what is being done? So the event name is EC2, like event source was EC2. We are describing the credit specifications of that. Okay. And uh, something regarding EC2 have happened over here with my particular IP address. Right. This is being shown. Now, if we go back, We have another cloud trail as well. Okay, so what we can do is we can just see this as well that what is there into this cloud trail log. So if I try to open it, I see that there's so much over here, right? So you can see so many things are being uh, listed over here. So what is happening over here? Uh, we are having again. What are we going to search for? Let's just search for event name. Okay, event name. So we are updating the instance information. Then we have listed the instance associations. We have described the account attributes. We have listed the buckets. We have uh, get the bu bucket public access. We have listing, we are listing the access point. We are getting we are getting the account public access block, right? Bucket ACLs, all of these actions have been performed over here. Okay, so these are all the actions which are done just in few minutes of time and each and everything that is being done, okay, would be trailed over here. So you can understand that how good this would be and how much of data we would be getting, so much of data. But yes, it would be good for security, it would, it would be good for auditing purpose and uh, troubleshooting, right? So this is about the cloud trail that we have. So that's it for the demonstration, guys. So uh, everything is being covered, right? So that's it for the demonstration. One more thing which is being left, okay, sorry for that. We have VPC flow logs as well. Let us also see that once. So obviously when we want to create the VPC flow log, we will be going to our VPC panel, right? So once we are going to our VPC panel, we will be selecting the VPC for which we want to enable the flow logs. So I'll go to your VPC over here. I'll select this default VPC. And under flow logs, I will be able to create a flow log for VPC. So we can give the demo flow log over here. You want to filter the type of traffic to capture. Do you want to, you know, fill, accept all the traffic? Do you reject, want to reject any traffic or do you want to? Accept traffic only, rejected traffic only, or do you want to capture all the traffic? So I want to capture all the traffic. Maximum aggregation interval can be either 10 minutes or 1 minute. The destination would be S3 bucket. We have to give the ARN over here. I'll give that ARN uh, over there. Just a second. Then uh, the log record format, it can be in the... AWS default theme or it can be the custom format that you want to give. You can select the attributes that you want over here. Okay, but I'll just go with the default format itself. It would be in the textual format. I don't want parquet. <clears throat> if you want to analyze it, then it is good if you have it in the parquet form. Right, I do not want it high uh, compatible. The partition logs, we would be partitioning our log by time okay so every 24 hours it will be partitioned so that our uh, file would be of smaller size and it can be queried correctly so once everything is done i have to give you the arn of the bucket for that just give me a second i have this bucket my aws bucket 27001 i'll put that 
and then I will create flow log. So we'll go back to the flow logs here. One demo flow log is created as you can see. Right? Uh, we will be able to go to S3 and we'll be able to see the flow logs over there. So let me just navigate to S3. So this is where you would be seeing your logs. Right now I do not have any traffic generated, right? That's why we do not have any flow logs generated over here as well. So that's it for this demonstration, guys. This is how you create your flow logs, right? And uh, once your traffic flows in and out of your VPC, it would be captured over there in the S3 bucket. So this is all for this particular module where we have learned about monitoring and alarms. We have talked about services such as CloudWatch and CloudTrail, and we have seen the demonstration of them as well. Thank you so much.